Hi, everybody. Before I came into the ministry a hundred years ago, uh, I used to be a public school music teacher. I loved middle school. I loved teaching middle school. And if it hadn't been for a call to the ministry, probably I would, I don't know, still be teaching middle school. But <clears throat> it was many, many years ago. Schools were very different. But uh, I taught middle school music, and uh, that included uh, five sections of general music, uh, six sections, I guess, two each for grades six, seven, and eight. And I'd have each kid for 10 weeks, and then they'd move on. They had the MASH subjects, music, art, shop, and home ec, each for 10 weeks in each of the three years. And so uh, the background that my kids got in music was, was pretty extensive. Just a second, I have a visitor. Okay. And um, so I used to have to do uh, homework assignments, have them do homework assignments. And one of the things that I would tell them was, um, listen, I understand that sometimes you forget, sometimes uh, something happens, and if you come to me and you are honest with me, then uh, there will be no penalty, and you can make it up and get it all done, and get the same grade. If, on the other hand, you lie to me, I'll take five points off. However, if you don't turn something in and you give me a creative reason, then uh, you will not only get full credit but an additional point and invariably people would try that but you know my job was to stimulate creativity but the caveat was that I said to them but you must understand I have been doing this a long time and in order to do to get that creative extra point you have to tell me something that has never been presented to me before and invariably every semester some kid would try and know they'd lose and so they'd you know get the five points off every once in a while maybe there were two times maybe uh in 10 years that somebody got that extra point but the point was to be honest and to recognize that um it's okay to be honest and i would rather have you be honest than make excuses my thought today, I woke up thinking about, and of course all this is going on in the uh, public domain now, of, um, Bob Woodward's newest book and responses from the administration and, uh, and you know, things about religion where one group will claim Jesus is the peacemaker and the other will show a picture of Jesus with an Uzi. And I look at these good people and some of them I know and take them into my heart. Good, caring, honest believers. And they give me a lot of excuses for either why they do what they do or why the church seems to do what it does. These church leaders, not our mainline denominations, or the government or our leaders there, why they do what they do. And I just want to look at everybody and say, aren't you tired of making excuses? How many times are we going to make excuses to justify something? Just let that hang out there for a little bit, because I think that's what so many people do now, and they get caught up in not wanting to say, you know, I just didn't see it that way, but I do now. Or, you know, I think I was wrong about this person. Or, you know, I used to think thus and such. But now I've read some things, or I've seen some things, or I've prayed about it, and I just see things differently. I mean, I've had to do that. Haven't you really, in one way or another, in one relationship or another, haven't you just had to come back and say, yeah, you know, I, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. I thought it did. But now when I'm listening to you, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. There is nothing wrong with that, with doing that. And so these people who are going through contortion after contortion 
to defend some religious leader or some political leader or some, I don't know, some uh, belief that they've held, even if we've held it all our lives. Aren't we supposed to be able to grow and to change and to hear and see new things that then take us in another direction? God help me, I hope I feel differently about things than I did when I was in sixth grade, those sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And I hope that I feel differently than I did, uh, let's say, about religion when I was in high school. And I hope that I understand politics differently than I did in my 20s. Nothing wrong with being in your 20s and feeling a certain way about things. But I hope that if you're in your 40s or your 60s or your 80s, you're not feeling and thinking the same way that we did in our 20s. And so we have to be able to change. We have to be able to take in information. That's a God-given gift, that we can take in information and assess it and maybe come up with different answers, don't you think? But instead, we keep seeing, and this happens in church all the time. No, I had this idea about Jesus, and you know, I learned in Sunday school when I was 11 years old, blah, 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 blah. Well, maybe you did learn it when you were 11 years old. You know, when I was uh, learning American history about the Civil War, when I was younger, we were taught a lot about states' rights, and we were taught a lot about the economy, and slavery was mentioned. Well, you know, now I look at it and I see a whole different slew of reasons. Some are nuanced and some are just blatant. And now I can look back and say, you know, maybe my teaching wasn't as accurate. My generation wasn't taught about the great black leaders. You know, Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass. We weren't taught those things in school. We were whitewashed as were and are many people in this country. And I'm poorer for it. So I want to learn more about it. And you know, over the years, I've had to change some of my opinions. What the heck, people? You know, don't be afraid to say, gosh, I thought one way and now I think another. And especially don't be afraid to do it about your faith or about politics or about other people. That's the thing. If you're going to be in relationship with someone, and I guess even if you're not, but especially if you're going to be in relationship with someone, we have to give each other the right to change and grow, to ask the same questions of them that we may have asked for the last 30 years and hear a different response and to honor whatever their response is. And maybe it goes the other way. Maybe we've agreed with them. They've agreed with us for 30 years, and now all of a sudden they don't. Honor where they are. Honor what they say. Believe them when you hear it with your own ears, what they are telling you. And maybe we have to change a little. That's the thought for the weekend. It can be a little unnerving, I know. But I think we have to do that. I think God calls on us to keep growing, keep learning, keep changing. That's why he gave us the power. She gave us the power of discernment. All right. So thanks for joining me for this prayerful pause with the pastor. Thanks if you've been here all week. It's been great, hasn't it? Maddie thanks you too, don't you? Yes. Uh, and we'll see you uh, in our time next week. Of course, online. It could be, you know, 30 seconds from now. I'm Pastor Deb Swift of South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York. You've been watching A Prayerful Pause with the Pastor. We invite you to visit our YouTube site if you're not already there, South Church Rochester, where you can find more Prayerful Pause meditations and also complete worship services. And for now, don't be afraid to change. Listen to what people say. Stop making excuses, even if they are creative. You know, that's kind of for middle school, not for grown-ups. All right, everybody. Later. God bless. Take care. Bye for now.